Howdy folks, it's Diecast Play here again, and welcome back to NASCAR Thunder 2003. In this episode, we're going to tackle the crazy uphill, downhill, what, 11 turn road course of Infineon Raceway, the Dodge Save Mark 350, race 16 out of 36. Oh boy, man, I am uh, I'm so excited to go back to Sonoma. I love this racetrack. And as you can see, guys, we are sixth in standings. I mean, we are 21 points away from top five in points. It's looking really good for our team. It really is. I mean, we're within 150, and we're not even at the halfway point. The halfway point, in my opinion, has always been the July Daytona race. That is the unofficial halfway point of the season, and we're within it. You know, we are definitely in the mix for the championship as... We're about to enter a three-race wildcard stretch. So to kick off the middle of the summer, you know, the beef of the summer, we have a three-race wildcard. You got Infineon Raceway, Daytona Road Course, which is my probably my favorite race all year run, honestly, besides the Daytona 500. And then you got the Pepsi 400. So you got three opportunities for a upset, you know, Going to California, then you go going all the way down to Florida, and then we bounce back at Atlanta after it. But man, that's going to be fun right there, guys. That's going to be fun. Three weeks, three opportunities. Let me tell you what, man. I am excited, and you know what? We're going to run. We're going to run the peel out real end car. Why not? Let's go to California. All right, folks. It's summer, it's 2004, and we are not on pole. Yes, guys, uh, oh, wow, look at that, the 22 car gets hit and practiced by the 8 car. Uh, but, yeah, we are not on pole, we qualify 31st. 31st, guys, 31st, I'm not happy about it, but wholesale, wholesale changes, okay? I, I changed a crap load of stuff on this race car, trying to get it better for race trim. I think we might have a car to get a top 10. But I think starting from 31st is going to be way too much to be able to win this race. If we can keep our nose clean, maybe we can do some strategy. Either way, let's get the 2004 Dodge C Mark 350 underway. NASCAR Winston Cup Racing is in the Sonoma Valley today. MRN is live with flag-to-flag -flag coverage of today's Dodge Save Mark 350 from the Infineon Raceway. It always makes it interesting to watch these drivers have to turn left and right. You know, Joe, this track can really show off a driver's talents. This is truly a course where your skill alone can mean the difference between finishing first and 41st. The Caterpillar Dodge will be looking to break his poor finish record at the road courses. You know, I spoke to him in the garage earlier about his chances today. He feels pretty confident that they've got a top 10 car. Now let's see if he can take care of his car to the end. Jeff Burton is not getting the kind of starts he'd like to at these road courses. I watched him in the qualifying run, and it just wasn't smooth. you got to be smooth all the way around these road courses, or your time is going to suffer. Joey Jovan seems to have a tough time when we come to the road courses. Yeah, he doesn't have much experience on these right-turning tracks. He's been working hard and getting some advice this week, though. Maybe he can pull off a better finish. Folks, Dale Jarrett, Rusty Wallace, and who's that cat sitting in third? Oh boy. Oh boy. We got some rookies up here. We got some road course ringers. This is going to be interesting, guys. So, if you remember back in the first season, Rusty Wallace won this race. We won it last year in 2003, but guess what? It's 04. It's a brand new season. We're starting 31st. We got a lot of ground to make up, but hey, we are inside the top 10 in points, and we're 21 points away from cracking the top five. We got two two more races till the halfway point. We're going to Daytona next week for the doubleheader, the road course, and the super speedway event. Maybe celebrate wine country before then? Who knows? Here we go. Green flag at Infineon Raceway. All right, my strategy for this race don't tear up the equipment. 
Try to keep the cars clean as best as possible. Oh boy. Uphill, they're gonna break check hard. Yep. Okay. Okay. They're not gonna move. I'll move them. Try not to tear up the car. That's that's my goal today, is just to try to get through this event without killing the car. A little bit of a side scrape there with Robbie Gordon, who's a road course ringer for RCR. As the 46 car gives us a pint. Did not expect him to be there. Oh wow, that was way too sharp. Yeah, so we got some damage on the back ends. You're gonna have that. 46 car probably has it coming. I mean, I don't know if I chopped his nose or he stuck his nose in there and I didn't even have time to react. All I know is it was a sharp right-hander and I just seen a 46 right there on my inside. And Oops, sorry, Gordon. Try to outbreak him here in turn 11. Oh no, no, Marlin, no! Oh my god, yep, that was bad. So much for not tearing up the race car. <laughs> yep, so much for that. I kind of I went in there way too hot and got to beat down the back end of the car to get a little bit more downforce out of it, but for the most part, we're all right. Oh man, it's been definitely been a rough first lap here at Sonoma. We're 23rd. We're we need to get points, man. We've got to brace aggressive. Oh, Nelly. But we got to, we can't tear up the car anymore. We got to keep the fenders on it. Oh, that wall sticks out pretty quick there. Inside, trying to make the move around our teammate Matt Kins. Oh, dang it. That's a bad thing when you break in hard. You're going in at a sharp angle while they're going in as an arch. If both sides don't give a little, then you're going to make bad contact like right there. He came in there at an arch. I came in at a sharp angle. It just did. It just does not work. It really doesn't. But, hey, we got the spot. Oh, big break check. Break check there. Yeah, we got some damage on the car. I'm trying to avoid damage, but... Oh, we had to lock it up big time there to avoid hitting our brother, Ward Burton. I don't know if we got enough get up and go to get around his dodge. And he's got a really cool paint scheme today. It's we are as well. Got some nice uh, paint kits out here at Sonoma, out here in the beautiful California sunshine. Going uphill, uphill here. Oh, there's 30 car. Yeah, that would be a really cool paint scheme to run, that American Online car. I'm surprised no one's made a throwback for that car, to be honest. Like, I could see... Oh, goodness. What would be a good brand for that to throw back to? I, I could see anybody do a, a paint scheme to that. You know, blue, blue and yellow go together very well. So I could see anybody making a throwback to that. Meanwhile, we're up to 17th, and it's only lap three. Uh, fuel mileage, guys. What do we do? Do we short pit? Or do we just muscle our way through here? Because I'm thinking, if we short pit, everyone cycles out. I don't know, guys. I don't know. I'm going to short pit. But let's try something different. We need to gain some track position. No damage repair. Four tires. Loosen the car up. Let's short pit. Let's short pit, and then we're going to basically just grind it out and see if we can gain those 15 spots. It's a gamble, man. It really is. The thing is, I'm, I'm confident in our speed because we, were, we qualified 31st, and we were able to make up 15 spots in three laps. Sure, there was some beating and banging, but I'm confident in our overall speed that we're actually going to be able to make up some time. Uh, short pit, but who knows? We'll have to see how it plays out. Caution will kill his strategy, but we weren't so far away from the leader that it's going to set us a lap down, I don't believe. So I think short pit might actually be in a, a good strategy. I don't know. We did repair the damage, so we're going to have that problem, but for the most part, that's the problem with having damages. If you short pit, you take the damage repair time, it kills your strategy. So that's why I didn't take it. But we should have enough gas to go. I mean, if the AI was pitting, we should be able to pit with them. But we're playing for no caution. 
everyone stay out. Or honestly, a caution might actually benefit us because if no one's pitted and a caution came out, everyone's going to jump down pit road. We'll save a little bit of fuel and we will rotate to the lead. I don't know. We're going to try the short pit strategy. I've never tried this, you know, you know, short pitting. See how this goes and see how the AI reacts to it. Because each game, each NASCAR game has different scenarios for pitting. Like I've, I think on NASCAR 6, you want to pit exactly the light lap before the leader and on nascar 03 and 04 you want to pit on the uh it doesn't matter when the leader pits you want to pit in the second group of cars second main group of cars that pit it's so each game has their own pit mechanics as they did change it and evolve it with each title released so i'm interested to see how this plays out we're 37th right now and we got to run some qualifying laps car's not rotating needs more handling I don't know why the car feels really sluggish like it just doesn't want to turn doesn't want to get up on the gas or I don't know but we got a little bit of fresher tires so I mean honestly what we could have done is could we could have just put put it around the track took two but then again we would lose it on the back end I don't know I'll have to see how this plays out when everyone else pits We, we didn't pit in the top 10. We pitted at, like, what, 16th? So it wasn't like we were, like, half a second behind the leader. We were decently behind. But I'm willing to gamble and see how this plays out. You know, it's the wild card stretch. It's the summer of 04. Take a gamble, you know. Take a gamble. See how it goes. We'll learn from it, you know. Because we got another road course race coming up. We're, we're going to, you know, Daytona Beach after this. You know, we're in wine country this weekend and next weekend we'll be in daytona beach so take the information we learned from this race and we'll you know incorporate to next week's race which is going to be on a thursday and we'll, we'll go from there you know we'll go from there and see how everything plays out we'll take some information we learned on the setup and what can we improve on for next week's race because the ai does get faster every season so you have to adjust your cars accordingly and we got a gaggle over here Oh boy, looks like Bill Elliott uh, is blowing up here at California and he's in a terrible spot on the racetrack because he is through the S's, There's it's a one groove, it's one groove, so everyone's going to get held up behind him, a caution is decently likely, so I want to make sure we get our position back ASAP. This could be detrimental to our strategy. That did not help either. Come on, we gotta get our spots back, guys. Short pitting, let's see how this plays out. We were like 16th when we rotated out. We're up to 23rd, so that's a little bit of a gain. Cars, the tires are worn, got damage on it. I mean, this is a gamble. You know, we, we the thing is, guys, we were in a box from the start of this race. We qualified deep in the pack. We got damage on the car, you know, that's part of restarting in the back at a road course. Damage on the car, um, we took the gamble because we were in a box, you know. I didn't want to just grind it out and finish top 10, you know, back into the top 10 and, you know, just come away with a decent points date. I want to win here at Sonoma, I do. It's a road course, I want to add another road course to this play series, you know, uh, a win here at, you know. Sonoma Raceway. It's a beautiful racetrack. My, one of my favorite racetracks we go to. And I say that with a lot of places, to be honest. But if I had to pick a second favorite road course, it'd probably be Sonoma. My number one favorite North American road course is easily Road America. Second one, probably Sonoma. Third one, probably Watkins Glen. Uh, the 17th. Interesting how this is shaking out, and we got plenty of gas, I believe. We're actually behind some cars. Bump him out of the way. 16th, yep. Yeah. We rotated back to where we uh, initially started this strategy on. We got Dale Jr., Junebug, and the Budweiser Monte Carlo right ahead of us. 
little bit of a wobble there. Yep, and the leaders are still pitting, so short pitting strategy coming to play here at Infineon Raceway. And last year, when we went to the Daytona Road Course, when Jimmy Johnson pulled out a, 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 a win out of the box with Chad Canals, they used pitch strategy to win. Oh, sorry, Johnny Benson, didn't mean to door slam you. It's a beautiful car, I might add. But they used pitch strategy to outfox me and win that race. I thought I had it won. Like, I was leading. I had a very fast race car, and they cycled out after all the pit stops. They were like, oh, my goodness, probably four seconds ahead. I mean, I couldn't believe it, man. The car's getting super loose there. And that's the leader. So short pitting, yes, that strategy looks like it's a good one. But we're going to have to earn it. we got to get around Bobby Labonte. There's Joe Gibbs Racing Pontiac, who's... You know, hasn't had that good of a season, to be honest with you. You know, he's kind of in the tail end of his career, in my opinion. And you don't know how many of these opportunities you're going to get left. Oh, goodness. Big damage there. This might bring out a caution and end the race. Because if that hood comes off, they ain't going to have much time. So I'm trying to hurry up and get to Labonte's bumper. But he's got a, he's got a fast car, man. He's not, he's not just a fluke. Joe Gibbs Racing doesn't have crap cars. They got some hot rods. We've seen how Tony Stewart almost won Pocono when Martin did. A lot of damage on the car. Short pinning turned out to be the right strategy. And we're gaining on. Did he did he pit yet? He's already pitted. Coming to lap 10 here at Infineon Raceway. Jeff Burton, Bobby Labonte duking it out. I'm going to try to pass some clean guys. I'm not going to try to rough them up. I got respect for Labonte. He's a Corpus Christi guy. I'm from Texas. You know, I live in Texas. So I'm going to show him respect. I'm going to try to pass him cleanly. If it's last corner, then of course I'm going to, you know, maybe move him up the hill. But I'm not going to try to bulldoze him. I'm going to try to race him cleanly as possible. Clearly we got a better race car than him. Joe Gibbs Racing versus Roush here at Sonoma. Interstate Batteries versus Sitco. If one of the parts on my car come apart and brings out the yellow, it's a mad dash to the line. And anything goes there. And this is the S's. You don't want to pass here, man. It is so hard to navigate the S's here. Flat downhill. A lot of speed. I'm having to let off the gas so I don't run over them right now. This is not a passing zone. If you pass here, you're going to make contact, and it's going to be... See, right there. Boom. Big bump. I can't afford to make those bumps. Can we get around him here? Looking inside. Inside of the Joe Gibbs Racing 18. Oh, a little bit of a bump. Take the lead away from Labonte. Plenty of gas on board. Plenty of gas. Can we just get around the racetrack, guys, and pick up yet another win? The hood is flapping. Here comes the 18. And a check behind them. Jerry Nadu, Rusty Wallace, and Dale Earnhardt Jr. So, interesting. Short pitting, man. Short pitting. I have never used the strategy, really, or at least I can't remember the last time I did. A new strategy. And somehow, someway, we leapfrogged from 16th place. Of course, we had a pretty good race car, even though we had damage. 16th uh, place, all the way up to second, and we had to earn the last spot. Or, yeah. So, I mean, this is crazy, man. To think that we can pull this one out of the box with a strategy win. And there's the hood. That would be our caution right there. Wow. Wow. As we sail through the little, little corner here, uh, Wallace gets around. Labonte, Craven's in the top five. Turn 11. One more opportunity for Rusty Wallace. Stay focused. You, get the lead back. you ain't getting it, buddy. I'm getting it today. Jeff Burton and Roush Racing pulls out the strategy to win again at Sonoma. Strategy. Wow. Heck yeah, man. Another win. We swept California this year. And what a beat up race car. But hey, short pitting, man. Short pitting got us the win. 
I just didn't think we had enough to muscle through the whole field. I really didn't think we had it in this. I thought we had to do something outside the box. Sure enough, it paid off. We got the W and another win in 2004. We won at Fontana. Just kidding, we didn't. I'm thinking of last year. I didn't sweep California this year. We got second, okay? We got second. And we got first here at Infinia. I'm going to go over here and do a burnout for the fans. Back to back here at Infineon Raceway. I'm going to do a burnout uphill. Amazing, man. Amazing. Try to see if we can do a little bit of a donut over here. Why not, you know? And that's where the car will lie. Not many drivers left. What a race, man. Sure, the car's beat up, uh, you know, everywhere. <sighs> but guess what? We came away with the victory, we did what we had to do, and we got the W, man. We had to use strategy. We had to do something different to get the win. And that's what's important. We didn't just back into this. We didn't just, you know, sit around. No, we actually had to do a pitch strategy. We had to make up the time on the fresh tires. We had to navigate through the traffic, not tear up the race car any more than we did. And then run down the leader, Bobby Labonte, who I think he was on beat tires because he got passed pretty quickly uh, for second by Wallace. And he had one last shot at our car and he couldn't get it done. But look at that. Bobby Labonte finished his third after leading the lap before the light flag. And uh, here's your top ten. You, get, you see some uh, interesting cats in the mix. You got E-Gold. You got Ricky Rudd. Uh, Ricky Craven, Bobby Labonte, you know, some cats that generally don't get up there inside the top 10. Well, they got themselves the top 10 today, and uh, Rusty Wallace dominated this race. Only gets seven laps led, and he gets the max bonus points, but we get the W. So, a uh, very good job for Roush Racing. Whew. What a race, man. What a race. That was fun. Another win at the Dodge Save Mark 350. Ford goes to victory lane. And Roush is just blowing the doors off the competition this summer. Man, we won New Hampshire. We won Pocono. Okay? We go and win Michigan. We won Sonoma. We're batting four for four so far. And we're going back to another road course next week. And that episode's going to be the Daytona road course. So you're not going to want to miss that. Go ahead and hit the subscribe button and notification bell. So you won't miss it, guys. It's going to be fun. Thank you all so much for tuning in. I really appreciate all the views and subscribers, everything. I appreciate it, guys. And with all that being said, hope you're having a great one out there. Diecast Buffet, signing off.